hand over to Sam, who's going to start the discussion. Thank you. Thanks, Georgia. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Early afternoon. I hope you're all uh, eating some lunch while we talk. Um, I'm Sam Barclay. I'm the Chief Growth Officer for Stay On Front. Uh, as Georgia said, we're a global uh, company providing uh, retail optimization tools to the consumer goods and pharmaceutical industries. With me, I've got Archel Aguilar. He's the Managing Director of Australia New Zealand. Thanks, Archel. And we've got Aaron Eccleston. Aaron is our commercial and strategic, commercial and strategic director for the APEC region. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so uh, the format of the, the this webinar is uh, I'm going to be moderating. Archel and Aaron are the experts uh, in this area, so they're going to be adding, uh, uh, responding to the to the questions as we go along. Um, I will uh, look at the questions at the end if that's okay, and and pick out the questions from the from the group to ask to the team. Um, if something important comes up uh, through, uh, during the discussion, uh, I'll try and keep an eye on it. Okay, so uh, today we're going to get into a pretty deep discussion about the uses of digital image recognition and and uh, how to make it successful. But before we get into that, uh, Archel, perhaps you can start just by explaining what uh, digital image recognition actually is and what it does. Yeah, of, of course, Sam. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, yes, I guess simply... Uh, digital image recognition um, in a in a store sense uh, is a technology that can read the image of a shelf or a display and, and recognizes the products that are in that image and then converts that to data that can be used in a in a meaningful way. Sam. So it's it's actually technology that's been around for quite a while, about I think in the 80s, and it's having a bit of a, a renaissance at the moment with the, because of techn technological advancements in, in hardware and, and software and also storage, but other AI solutions like ChatGPT. Um, Aaron, anything to add on that? Yeah, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so essentially, I would, how I would describe this is we turn what the shopper sees into, into data points. So we process data from the images, such as the, the SKUs, the, the shelves, the dimensions, the amount of shelves, et cetera. And we also overlay uh, predefined functional data, such as stores with banner, uh, geolocations type uh, as well. So some of this data is made up, for, uh, made available for uh, the rep in store to be more effective uh, and efficient within a visit. And then in parallel, um, the, the data is also processed in the cloud uh, and aggregated in, in, a, in a way where you can make business decisions uh, in your BI tools. But we, we as an industry have been doing this with humans for many, many years. What, why is digital image recognition superior to a human just manually entering the data, if you like? Well, uh, yeah, uh, I think technolo the technology of digital image recognition is kind of similar. To the to the human brain. In, in fact, it was modeled off the the human uh, neurons in the brain. It's it's called a neural network. Uh, so it it can be trained to recognize things in images. Uh, for instance, if I train a neural network, much like a, a human, if I train a, a person or a neural network with enough cat images, um, it will be able to recognize cats in those images, even if they haven't been trained on those images before. Um, but being technology, uh, it can do the work at a much faster and bigger scale than uh, a single human can. And of course, um, you want humans and, and your reps to be able to do more valuable work than simply gathering the data from a shelf. Yeah. I think we can all agree now that we're, we're truly entering the, the world of AI. Um, for AI to be effective, we need to feed it with accurate data. Uh, and not only that, we need to... Uh, provide with uh, a magnitude and scale of, of data in order to get the most out of it. Uh, currently, it's estimated around uh, uh, the accuracy of uh, human um, uh, data uh, put into the system is around about 70%. Uh, and not only that, it's, it's actually quite a small number of data points uh, that can be retrieved. So in summary, uh, I'd, I'd probably best describe digital image recognition uh, is the ability to provide scale and accuracy uh, to uh, to your business. Okay, I think that's easy to understand. 
um, AI essentially takes what we can do as humans, but it does it at enormous scale and it does it at greater accuracy, getting us more data points to to feed into the system. I think I think that that's pretty clear. So so we've talked about getting the image, uh, pulling data out of the image. What, what what do we do then? We we've 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 taken that image. We've identified what's the image. What happens next? I think. Um... Aaron, you mentioned that, you know, with a human, there's only a few data points that can really practically collect. Um, but where image recognition comes into, um, you know, into the opportunity, so they say a picture paints a thousand words. Well, effectively, you can potentially get a thousand data points uh, from an image um, when you have image rec um, the technology around image recognition collect that information for you. So, when you have that information, you can do really interesting things. So we we can start to work out and know what's on the shelf or display for a start. It's pretty straightforward. Then we can also quickly work out what is not there but should be. Uh, we can also collect other interesting data points like where on the shelf is the product or display. In some cases, we can capture the price. We can measure how much space something takes up on the shelf, whether it's on promotion, and there's, there's heaps of data. There's also the metadata. So when the photo was taken, so you can start to analyze, you know, store conditions at a particular point in time as well. So there's, it's not just what's in the image. Sometimes it's what surrounds the image, the metadata. The context. Yeah. Aaron, anything to add to that? Yeah, well, I mean, whilst there's endless possibilities, I think first and foremost is, is about providing the rep with uh, the right information in order to uh, complete their visit uh, efficiently and effectively. Uh, we want to provide the reps with immediate and priority items to address. Uh, and not only that, we want, we want to free up free their time. We want them to have more time uh, in order to sell, um, to give you a really distinct return of investment from that person in the store at any given time. Uh, in parallel, whilst there's thousands of other, hundreds of thousands of other data points being processed uh, in order to provide visibility uh, to head office as well. Um, so there's two different streams, if you like. Um, then we get into uh, the exciting part of uh, being able to merge data sets, overlay planograms, uh, point to sale uh, data. Um, and we're able to start looking at story. Um, and we're able to tell our customers the complete picture. Um, and our customers are able to go to the retailers and tell the same story. So a, a good example is that uh, if, if you have good distribution data, you actually know what's going into a store. At the same time, you can be your own competitor uh, because there may be products which you don't expect to see in that store, uh, which are coming from wholesale. So straight away you're able to have meaningful conversations in store um, and then in the category uh, we see a lot of parallel imports so what's coming from overseas it may be your brands but where are they coming from so quickly you're able to kind of see the, uh, unravel the story if you like um, if you don't get the execution right uh, you're restricting the opportunity to sell the product um, and that's potentially damaging your distribution. Uh, so measuring the shelf is, is really important in that respect. Um, and then understanding uh, any 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 issues or distribution gaps uh, quickly, rather than having to wait uh, three or four weeks for, for, for point of sale data to be processed, you have to jump on that really, really quickly. Um, so this kind of goes beyond the traditional uh, method, uh, if you like, from a, a manual entry uh, for a rep. Okay, so we'll get into some of those more complex things a little later on in the discussion. Uh, I think we're going to talk a lot about prediction uh, later on. But but what, what we've heard so far is that not only uh, can we get at the basic metrics like out-of-stock information, et cetera, but you're talking about much more complex information um, about share of shelf, competitor brands, SKUs. So you're talking about a much wider range of data than you can get from any other source. Is that right? Is the, is the sky really the limit here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think where I see the incredible value uh, of digital image recognition and, and shelf execution data, I think firstly, you own the data. So you can you can you can manipulate and you can change the data as you like, but you can use it with all retailers. Um, and in the channels such as uh, liquor, um, 
data is actually quite scarce, especially point of sale data. Um, and, and definitely across independence where it's extremely fragmented, you may get some warehouse withdrawal data, but you don't know if it's cotton's been broken down, et cetera. So having competitive, uh, competitive information is not only an advantage, it, it's really vital to understand what's actually happening in the market. Right. I understand. So th there, there is an enormous range of potential data points here and potential use cases. Now, I've been in the tech industry for 30 years. When there's a potential for a huge number of use cases, there's often uh, problems and concerns and challenges with actual delivery because there are so many things to be done, it's hard to choose which one. So it sounds like it would be easy to fall into the trap here of assuming that, that because there are so many different uses here that if I fire up uh, digital image recognition technologies that I'm going to be solving all my problems. Is, is, is that the way you look at it? Is, it? is that an easy mistake to make and avoid? Absolutely an easy mistake. It's all very exciting at the moment um, because image recognition can be applied to so many different problems. And, and of course, there's different types of digital image recognition. Um, you know, we talked about, um, you know, taking a photo of the shelf, but OCR, optical uh, character recognition, is another type, um, an earlier type of image recognition where you can recognize characters, handwritten characters. So, uh, look, when 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 there are projects um, that do occur uh, based off image recognition, um, you know, th those pro those projects don't often fail. But you know, in our experience, what where we do see that they don't go so well is when they're trying to do too much or the I guess the main thing is the business outcomes aren't really clear. Um, so it, it, it's really important to understand what you're trying to gain um, out of the technology and, and the potential um, and be laser focused with that. So, for example, um, digital image recognition could be used to make uh, retail store visits more efficient, uh, or it could be used to gather detailed planogram compliance data but if you're not clear about these objectives and the priority, the return on investment, um, you may um, end up not achieving any of these. Okay, so so let's start with that. That's that's a, that's an important point. There are different business outcomes that we're trying to achieve, and so if there are many different business outcomes that we're trying to achieve, let's focus in on that for a minute. Aaron, can you can you walk us through some of those different business problems that, that we can solve or should solve, should look at solving? Uh, and, and then let's talk about the technology second. Let's focus first of all on those on those business problems and, and outcomes. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think the, the most important way to group uh, digital image recognition solutions is, is really to start thinking about the business outcome we're, we're, we're aiming for. It's really critical to think about the objective in order to define the methodology uh, in use cases. And in, in some of the, the different examples uh, which which we see is, is, is the truth of the shell, for example, uh, the ability to gather rich, deep information, which is not commonly available uh, for both on-premise and, and also off-premises uh, and obviously off-premise as well. So, so the outcome here is, is that the ability to obtain valuable data on the shelf or at a bar, uh, which you're able to manage uh, relationships with retailers or, or on trade. Um, there's a potential, a lot of hypotheses in, uh, by both a retailer, but, but internally that can be proven or quickly dispelled by, by having access to this objective data. Um, another element here, which I'll, uh, which I'll add is, is, is rep-based incentives. So when reps are marking their own homework, it's naturally going to happen uh, that you're going to probably get an inflated view uh, of, of the shelf. Therefore, moving from a subjective to an objective uh, payment system is, is actually going to yeah, it's going to install good behaviors uh, at the shelf, that's one. Uh, but also you're going to have uh, usable data uh, on the back end. Uh, another area, and in, in I'll mentioned this before, is, is, is around compliance. Um, I've seen a, a big shift in this area, especially in the last couple of years, where uh, the ability to track compliance, uh, hold retailers accountable um, and share this data in range reviews with uh, with your retailers um, because naturally they want to be on shelf uh, and having this data, you can help them have your products on shelf. 
Uh, efficiencies, efficiencies in, in coal, which uh, we've alluded to already, but by, by gathering information quickly, we can better uh, direct the, the field associates to, to complete the right tasks uh, at the right time. Uh, perfect store. So perfect store is, is one which I think everyone's going through their own journey with perfect store. Um, generally, there's a lot of time in, in a, a budget allocated to creating a perfect store. Uh, therefore, being able to, to measure, uh, monitor, and probably more critically improve, um, you're really able to take uh, the perfect store full loop and you're able to close that, close that loop. Uh, and, and in this instance, we'd probably take images at the end of the call uh, rather than at the start. Um, and that's where you can start to manage and, and see your aggregated longitudinal data uh, for your perfect store. Uh, and then finally, uh, display and off locations. So we spend a lot of trade spend uh, um, on off locations. So the ability to measure the activation of, of displays, uh, the, 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 the promotional performance and the impact, uh, especially when married with point of sale data, it becomes a really significant layer. Uh, seeing the impact of your uh, displays uh, and whether it had a positive impact or a negative impact is, is really key, especially when you're accountable for that trade spend. Well, wow. okay. So so that was six. I, I think I was counting on my fingers as you were talking through those. There were six really important business outcomes or objectives that we'd be aiming at. Um, you started off with, with the truth of the shelf and knowing what is really happening on the shelf, a, a wide and broad and deep view of the shelf. You talked about rep-based incentives, sorry, incentives and objective information to support them. You talked about retailer accountability and the importance of compliance. Uh, you talked about efficiencies and call perfect store display on and off location. So those were, those are all incredibly important uh, objectives to set up and know and understand before you get into image recognition and choosing one of those, I assume. Uh, or, or, or more than one of those that you're going to go at. H how do those different outcomes impact the technologies that you're going to choose and the use of the technologies that you're going to choose? Um, I, I'm assuming that you're going to choose a different or, or tune the technology in a different way to support those those objectives. Is that right? Yeah, um, I can answer that one. So, I mean, Aaron raised six different use cases and you can adapt the technology and the use to, to each of those, um, absolutely. Um, you know, if, if your focus is more on, on a more efficient store visit, uh, then getting the rep to focus on, um, uh, getting the rep to focus on the high value relationship work is very important. So you would prioritize the faster results over more data points in that situation where you're looking for a more efficient store visit. On the, on the converse of that, if you want more data points to drive planogram compliance or category management, then we don't need those results in real time. We would prioritize getting the larger data sets um, over a faster response in that situation. Okay. So yep. by being clear about the outcomes um, of what we want with all those different use cases, we can decide on how best to tune the technology um, it, it all comes down to what what you do with the data. Um, that's that's really important. Um, okay. If you if you need it, um, you know, once in a while or more frequent, that that determines the the type of technology and its use. So, the the business purpose and outcome is is critical in that sense. Okay, so the the idea here is that is is that it's most important to have a a, a business objective led project, not a technology led project. If you have a technology-led project, you're likely to end up not actually solving any of the business problems that you have. You're going to be led by the technology and the shiny, shiny object. So so I, I think the, the the interesting thing there, do we have any case studies that, that talk about these different business cases or business uses? Is there is there a good case study that can help us understand that? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think this one, which uh, we're just working through, uh, just finalizing right now, but we've got a few interesting case studies. Uh, the one which I'm kind of thinking about is uh, the largest uh, spice company in the world. 
they use image recognition uh, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, to be more effective and efficient in store. So it's a very small time investment, just a couple of pictures, uh, and then close to real time, uh, the, the, the rep will get uh, the data back. So if you can imagine the, the small little jars on a the shelf, they, they all look very, very similar. Uh, there's very few distinction features. So, um, but with image recognition, we we're able to hone in on, on, on what's not there very quickly. We don't necessarily want to always tell you what is there. We want to tell you what, what isn't there. Uh, so in this instance, uh, there'll be a quick report back, uh, allowing the rep to uh, understand what is out of stock and they're able to fix that very quickly. Um, this is a much more efficient and effective way of, of doing this manually where they would take a lot of time in order to do that. So uh, it's very effective, they're, they're fixing the shelf, uh, very efficient, because uh, they're able to do that quickly. So it's a win-win, if you like. Um, by the same token, we don't want to overload uh, reps with too much data. They don't need all the other information. So giving the right data at the right time is really key. Uh, but in parallel, as we mentioned before, uh, being able to give the category team, for example, a head office, uh, the ability to look at the KPIs in a more um, in a, in a more granular way. Uh, they're able to then lead conversations with uh, within range reviews, uh, make sure that any distribution gaps are, are fixed or, or any issues are, 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 are dealt with pretty quickly. Um, and also that compliance piece, which we've spoken about, making sure that these retailer agreements which are in place, it, it, it hit. So... Uh, it's very kind of driven. Uh, we don't necessarily need that data very then, uh, but we still are able to turn that pretty quickly. So, so that's very interesting. So we've got a we've got an immediate use case uh, in the store, which is we need to get information to the representative very quickly about what's not there. And I, I understand what you mean about the small spice bottles. I, I love cooking, and I, when I stand in front of the spice rack, trying to trying to work out the difference between the the coriander, the ground coriander, and the, the smashed coriander. I mean, it's very difficult to see. So, so I can see how that would be super useful to the rep to be able to quickly identify that. And then you talked about the second use case, which is using um, uh, the much larger and richer data set after the fact uh, to have to, to to guide the conversation with the retailer. So you get to control and manage and uh, that that conversation with the retailer. Um, and I can see the use case there uh, for. For many years, obviously, retailers have had the had the upper hand in terms of the amount of data they have. Um, and so if we can level the playing field a little bit by providing a richer data set, I can I can see that being very important. We're going to talk a lot more about those data sets in, in a few minutes uh, further on in the conversation. But but you did just trigger a, a thought for me. Uh, we were just talking about um, uh, the, the being able to create data to manage relationships. And that made me think, um, you know, how how is image recognition specifically applicable to the drinks industry? What is it about the drinks industry that really makes uh, image recognition a great uh, a great tool here? Thanks for bringing that up. I think that's why we're here, Sam. Um, <laughs> the look, Aaron raised it earlier about the the data availability within the drinks industry. Um, we know. It's a bit dark um, when it comes to having rich data. Um, you know, I've spoken to, to many customers about the challenges with not having enough data, um, you know, just knowing what's selling in store, when is it selling, where in the store, uh, is it selling best and, and how? Also, you know, what are your competitors doing? What is my share of category? You know, these are the same questions and challenges, um, you know, that uh, the, the people that I speak to um, have. Um, we know through research um, about 75% of customers are still making decisions in front of the shelf. And therefore the risk of not having your product stocked or, or placed in the right location could, could have significant revenue impacts. Unfortunately, without this rich data, you're, you're kind of blind to making well-informed um, and justified and timely decisions. So, in the drinks industry, it's it's extremely valuable if you can acquire it um, effectively and efficiently. And if you do that consistently, then the opportunity is for companies to start picking up trends, changes in consumer behavior, um, allowing for newer insights for sales and marketing teams. 
Okay. So, so uh, if you like in the on-premise world, sorry, in the off-premise world here, we're talking about, um, you know, we have a lack of, of, of sales data. We have a lot lack of good, strong data. Image recognition certainly fills uh, an enormous gap there. What, what about on-premise? Is it the same in, in on-premise? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's probably less data in on-premise to, to be uh, to be quite frank. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, image recognition can be 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 used uh, across on-premise as well. We would think about bar taps, for example. Uh, we're able to understand uh, the, the assortment of bar taps. We can break it down into brands, uh, into segmentations such as craft versus lager versus new world, or how, however you segment. Uh, we can even probably go. We we, we definitely can go. A level lower than that uh, to subcategories, so IPAs, etc. Uh, and how we segment this, so it could be the front bar, it could be a back bar, it could be in the pokey, so even outside. So we start to see different um, different assortments in, in different areas of the bar. Um, and the well pour as well. So I, I heard a statistic that 80% of all spirits sold go for the well pour. So if you're asking for a rum and coke, it will naturally be whatever is in that well pour. Uh, it's a really important real estate to, to understand and, and be a part of. So understanding uh, what is in there, or if you've got a trade agreement to be in there, uh, being able to capture that uh, is, is incredibly uh, valuable as well. Uh, we can uh, also look at the back bar, back bar fridges, venue recognition uh, as well. So um, there's lots of different dimensions which we can do uh, on trade. Um, and uh, I think it's, it's pretty exciting um, when we start to look at it and, and be able to provide that data back to our customers. Okay, that's very interesting. So off, whether whether we're talking uh, off-premise off or on-premise, um, it's about providing a much richer data set that allows us to make better, better fact-based decisions. And I guess that leads us into into talking about what, what really this is all about at the end of the day, which is the continuing digital transformation of our industry um, and, and how digital image recognition is a part of that uh, and, and how it combines with other uh, data and technologies to, to create new things. So, so what is that next iteration of digital transformation? What, what, what's that going to be? I uh Look, I think the the ultimate opportunity, I think the the oil, oil well here is the the data um, that we we spoke about, um, and and being able to combine it with other data sources such as um, shipping data, warehouse withdrawals, um, and other data you can collect in the environment like basket size, geography, traffic, affluency. Um, you know, you can collect all of that data, even though. We spoke about it's hard to get, you know, point of sale data, for example. But you can start to, based on all those different data points, start to build a holistic view of the entire market, and then you can use AI and and data analysis to predict opportunities um, and issues uh, that exist before anyone else. Um, so, even if you're not visiting certain stores. Uh, through leveraging AI, you can start to use the data that's collected to build a profile of similar size stores with similar demographics and uh, those other points of interest uh, to, to work out what the uh, optimal frequency of when to visit stores um, and even better, uh, where the new stores are, the new opportunities that you haven't visited yet. So essentially you can use this data to highlight to your sales teams the the key stores um, where they can drive the most influence and when you're in the store what is the optimal range um, if that if your teams focus on those uh, items then sales will simply go up um, so it's I guess it's really important if you can have that all integrated into to one platform one system uh, and it's in fact really critical um, to have that for user experience, but also to have it in, um, you know, all in, inclusive in the one platform to to get insights as quick as possible. Yeah, I think you've covered it really well, Ojo. I think moving from binary data sets to uh, the ability to, to merge data sets is really going to support with more predictive and prescriptive analytics 
Uh, and that's where we want to go to. Uh, we're now able to apply AI uh, to this data set, which we can leverage across the business, uh, not just from a sales point of view, but also marketing uh, and other areas of, of the business as well. Okay, so so we, we actually covered a, a lot of important things in that. So let me just pe- peel, peel, peel a couple of things out of there if I can. So so first of all, um, what I heard in the first part of what you said there, Archel, was that the, the real opportunity here is to take all of these uh, this enormous rich um, digital image recognition data we're getting and combine that with other data sets. And I'm assuming you mean um, store segmentation, um, uh, transactional data, inventory and sales, if we can get our hands on it. Um, retail execution data, meaning what you do in store. So uh, I guess if you're combining retail execution, digital image recognition, transactional, store segmentation, all this, you're, you're creating an enormous data set. And the bigger the data set, the better it is for AI. And, and, and then AI can work its magic on that data set. It can do cohort analysis. It can start comparing things that we humans just don't have the scale to compare. Um, and, that, and that brought us to the second idea that you threw in there. You casually tossed in a couple of really important things here, so I just want to pull them out. The second one you pulled in there, put in there was prediction, because uh, what we've been talking about to this point in the conversation has been gathering data, gathering data, gathering data. But the power of AI in these data sets is actually predicting what's going to happen next. And, and by predicting what happens next, we can then... Um, uh, work to alter the future. I guess it sounds like a sci-fi movie, right? Uh, if we know what the future is going to be, are we going to change it? Um, so if we know that the future is going to be, there are going to be out of stocks in these places, or um, there, there's going to be underperformance of promotion in these places, then I guess we can act today to try and resolve those problems in the future. And I guess then if there wasn't a problem in the future, we're going to be left trying to work out whether whether what we did was valuable or not, right? So so uh, that 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 power of prediction is critical. I think I think that was a really important thing I heard there. Um, the next thing I heard that was really important from Aaron was was being prescriptive, um, and I think that's a really important point to bring out here. The the power of these enormous data sets and AI is that is I think what I heard you say is that that allows us to be much more prescriptive with our sales team about what they need to do in, in, in the field. Do these 10 things to achieve perfect store. Do these 10 things to grow sales. Do these 10 things. So so that allows us to be quite prescriptive to them in, in what they're doing. Is, is that right? Did, did I hear that correctly? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was moving from a, a reactive conversation to a proactive conversation in a nutshell. So yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay, so th- so I think those are some some really important things to bring bring out here. Is that digital Im- image recognition sounds to me like it's it's not an end in itself, right? It's a it, it's not the goal or the end to do image recognition. Uh, the 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 goal here is to create a bigger data set with all of these other p- pieces of data and put that together into a in, into a much bigger AI model that helps us understand the market much more holistically and drive behaviors and, and be much more prescriptive. And I think that's uh, that's really interesting. The final point that you brought out there, and, and this leads, leads to all of this, and that is that um, no longer is it enough to have a standalone image recognition tool. I, I think what I heard you saying there, Archel, is that, is that having a built-in image recognition tool, if you like, is, is really where the power is because if it's built in, the data is all in the same place. It's all, is, is that correct? Is that, did I hear that right? Yeah, that, that's right. And I'm being a little cheeky because that's what we do um, at Stay In Front is, you know, have that whole platform. Um, but it makes sense, um, Sam. You, you know, if you have it all in one place rather than separate systems, then um, you don't have all these different projects to transform the data and integrate all of that Um you know, it's, it's quite costly to do that. But if you have it in one platform, you get the insights a lot quicker and faster. And then that's the that's the goal. Okay. And, and to be honest, that makes perfect sense uh, with any um, technology adoption curve, right? Uh, technology, when it starts out, is always uh, a, a small point solution that does a very specific thing and solves a very specific problem. And then over time, 
as it becomes more and more useful that those features get added to the to the standard platforms in the market and suddenly before you know it um those 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 tools are available to everybody in the in the standard platforms and you know if i'm thinking of an example of that it might be say slack slack starts out uh, creates a market is a really cool technology that does some great things um, but as it becomes more useful uh, along comes the big platform microsoft and they add teams and and before you know it everybody's using teams because it's much more powerful to be part of the microsoft ecosystem if you like than it is as a standalone tool so useful as a standalone tool but really powerful when integrated into the whole platform i think i think that's what i heard you say yeah that's right so i think it's you know looking at it hol holistically and uh you know it's the the whole business outcome that we were talking about earlier okay so um i just want to wrap this up before we get to get to some questions um uh, we've got a couple of questions that have come in from the audience uh, I've been receiving a couple of texts, so so I'll get to those in a minute. A couple of them are quite interesting, but just before we get there, I'll, I, I want to kind of bring bring the conversation together and and, and highlight a few things um, from what I heard uh, from you two today. And please please confirm if 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 I'm 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 right on on what I heard. So so first of all, um, we we focused on the importance of understanding the business objective that we're trying to achieve. Uh, you made it perfectly clear that, for instance, if I'm trying to trying to provide uh, uh, data for the rep to execute their job better, then I probably need to take the photo at the beginning of the call to look at the shelf. Image recognition tells me what's not there, tells me what I need to do to fix that shelf. That's quite prescri quite prescriptive. It's quite directional, uh, and it's very quick, and it tells me what to do. So that that would be a use case like that. But um, but what I also heard is that if your if your drive is really more for a perfect store type metric or outcome, then maybe I want to take the photo at the end of the call after I've cleaned up the shelf, because once I've cleaned it up, then I can take a photo and that's that's my perfect store metric. And and I suppose there'll be there'll be some use cases where a, a photo before and after is 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 also useful. So I think understanding the 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 business problem we're trying to solve uh, helps us. Uh, understand the technology that we're going to, the, the way we're going to use the technology to solve that problem. It's not that we're using a different technology, but we're going to use the technology in a certain way to achieve the outcome. I, I think I think that's what I heard you say. Um, uh, Aaron, you, you hit on on six very important business cases, the, the truth of the shelf and the depth of the data, the, um, the, the efficiency of the call, the objectivity of the data to help us with measuring uh, sales rep uh, activities and outcomes. Um, you, you mentioned perfect store. Um, so you, you, you rattled through some very, very quickly and thank you for that. Uh, I'm guessing there are more uh, use cases than that though. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's a, a good outline of, of the ones which uh, are most commonly used, but this is a very malleable technology. Uh, and can be made bespoke to whatever uh, our clients or even the retailers require. Um, so we can absolutely work for any use cases and, 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 and co-develop uh, uh, the methodology, uh, if you like. Right. The next thing we covered off, which I, which I think is vitally important, is that really the, the there's the use cases that we're putting uh, image recognition to on its own. So we're going to use digital image recognition to achieve these specific outcomes on their own. But then there's a much bigger, more holistic picture, uh, which is combining that data with all the other data sets that we have available to us, transactional data sets, um, store demographic, geographic uh, segmentation and profiling, um, and uh, you know retail execution, the activity that we actually did, uh, promotional database, uh, promotional calendar, all that kind of stuff. And when we add all those things together, we create a much bigger data set. Uh, and then we start to, that that starts to become really useful to our AI processes that will, um, that, that will help uh, uh, start to prescribe the best places to go, the best actions to do. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, a little party political broadcast at Stanfront, we call that the retail optimization platform. But that's the that's the goal here. You're going to combine all that data together to create a much more holistic view. We talked about the the the, the problem of drinks outlets on premise off premise and the fact that they're quite dark uh, in terms of data. Um, 
not not dark in terms of the lights, but just dark because they don't have as much data as as other channels do. And I think that's a, that's a really useful in uh, useful um, use case here. It, you made a really important point, Aaron, and that is that you own the data. If you're taking the photos and you're generating the data, you own that data. You're not reliant on a retailer to give you information, sell you information, charge you for information. It's your data. So I think that's a really important uh, point to make uh, when you're when you're sending somebody in the store to take a photo or, or hiring somebody to do that. That that becomes your IP, your asset, your data asset, and that's incredibly valuable. Um, and and so th that that was very cool. I think the the on premise stuff, taking photos of beer taps uh, behind the shelf, the well, uh, those things are really important use cases uh, for for that segment of the market. So I thought that was interesting. So so that that next transformation, the next digital transformation, I think, is getting all this data together in one place and starting to let AI generate the insights and the actions and the activities and 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 you know I'm 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 often asked about the about the maturity curve, you know a customer will come to me and say hey where are we on the technology maturity curve when it comes to AI and digital recognition and those things, and I think that's always a really interesting conversation because because uh, right now I think as 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 an industry we're really only uh, you know about a quarter of a way up this maturity curve the. The use of AI and what we do, I think, has has an enormous impact for what we're doing. In fact, you know, I've been in the industry 30 years, and for 30 years, CEOs have been telling me I need to get my my sales team to the right place at the right time to do the right work, and um, and and that's been a 30 year challenge. But AI changes everything with that. The scale uh, that AI can achieve, the amount of data it can use to create those predictions and things that that's that's uh that's a game changer really changes the way we're doing things so that i i, I just wanted to wrap that up before we before we hit a, a couple of questions here um uh, here, here's an interesting one um uh let me read this out so there was some very interesting news out of chat gpt this past weekend they are developing a general image recognition system Will that change the industry? Um, Aaron, why don't, why don't you take that one? Yeah, look, I've, uh, I've seen it. it's pretty impressive stuff. I think it's, uh, it's designed for a very different uh, in this case, obviously. Uh, the key things which I would take into consideration here is that this is not uh, data analytics. Uh, it's very binary and static. Uh, um, having data sets uh, in the cloud, uh, that's not possible utilizing it for AI to make prescriptive and uh, predictive um, um, analytics is, is, is you're not going to be able to do that through that. Uh, and then obviously the security thing, as soon as you put something into uh, chat GPT, that's going to be teaching the engines. If you put something in there, you competitors are probably going to profit from that, uh, from that information. So okay. um, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's quite unique. And it was this really impressive stuff, but uh, it's, it's certainly not um uh along the lines of, of how we right. do recognition. not really applicable to what we're doing i, no. I think it's a, that's a very important point you make is that is that chat gpt doesn't have access to the private data sets that you have so no. so the, that our clients have so if you've got sales data selling in data promotional data all of those private internal databases that that we would use um to to create predictions um, none of that's available to chat GBT. It's just, just using public sources to, to create a prediction about what's in the image, but you're right. It was pretty, the, image, uh, pretty impressive stuff. What I saw. Yeah. I think we are talking about the vehicle, the technology, the image recognition. I think where we need to really think about is we're talking about data here. Uh, data is the output, uh, not the vehicle of the image recognition. It's what we do with the data and how we utilize that data. Right. Image recognition is not the, is not the end in itself. It's really what we're doing with the data to to drive behaviors. Okay, understood. Okay, so uh, another little question that, here Sam. for you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, before you jump to the next question, yeah. I just had a look at that as well, and um, it is pretty pretty cool. Chat GPT four, and one of those um, examples that they gave is um, you've got a picture of a plate of food, and it um, spits out what the recipe is and how to make it. So I thought right. that's that's pretty interesting maybe you know in you know drinks related you could have a photo of a cocktail and then it shows someone how to make it that that's that sounds like a great <laughs> idea. yeah 
But I, um, I think with all of that technology, you know, that's all fun, but if it's more the innovation, how does it help business? That's, you know, where um, it will naturally move towards. Yeah, fair, 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 fair play. Okay, uh, this is this is a quick little question here, which uh, which is easy to answer. Can digital image recognition recognize competitor information? Archel, why don't you why don't you take that one? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I I spoke about it earlier. In fact, um, you know, we we you can capture all these data, different data points um, with your products on shelf where it's located, but you could also do the same thing in the one photo with competitors. Um, so yeah, absolutely, you can. That's a that's a fairly straightforward, easy one. Okay, uh, here's another one. This one's a little bit more future focused, I guess. What? Why do images have to go to the cloud for processing? Why can't they be processed on my iPad directly while I wait? Okay, so uh, Aaron, you take that. Yeah, um, like the complexive uh, complexity and the nature of uh, providing this vast amount of data points uh, in processing in the cloud. It is a necessity to provide the, the big data analytics, the AI. Um, however, there, there may well be a use case where you just want a simple KPI such as uh, on-shelf availability, for example, for your products in a store. Um, and that's actually something which we're we're working on right now. And then hopefully, uh, I'd say by the end of the year, we'll be up and running with on-shelf uh, sorry, uh, on device uh, recognition. So uh, very different use case, uh, but yeah, it's, it's certainly in our pipeline. Okay, that's super interesting. So you'll be able to take a photo, I guess, of a display and it'll tell you immediately without going to the cloud, it'll tell you immediately what's missing off that display or something. Yeah, that's like right. That. Okay, great. Um, final one, I, I, this is actually a bit repetitive uh, of, of what we've already been talking about. So uh, Archel, take this one for me. Um, should uh, image rec, I'll call it digital image recognition. Should digital image recognition be part of my retail execution app um, or should it be separate? I think we already answered that in the discussion, but Archel, why don't you? The, it should be integrated. <laughs> integrate. So it, it should. I think there's a bit, bit of a difference there, though. I think there's little terminology difference. Integration um, often means, you know, having a separate application and, and doing data integration between them. But what we're really talking about here is having image recognition inside your uh, retail uh, execution platform, not um, as a separate integration problem, because if it's separate, you've got a data integration issue. So so I think what we're saying is it needs to be part of the application, not not separate. It's the, the, the goal is one view, right? Um, you know, if you have it, have all the various teams, sales, marketing, finance, the sales team in field um, looking at the same data, then everyone's, you know, um, singing out of the same hymn book. Right. Yep. Um, I believe that as well, Sam, is that if it's all in the same ecosystem, uh, if you are taking it, taking images on the, the, the start of the visit uh, and then you're fixing the other stuff, you're putting it into uh, the platform, actually the data which you then receive is whilst it was out of stock, is that actually also been fixed. So it's actually technically in stock by the end of a visit and we're capturing the whole journey, not just the static view. Uh, so the same ecosystem, uh, we see the whole journey and, and, and that's really important. Okay, fantastic. Um, I just want to end. Uh, I just want to end on a on a on a quick little um, uh, use case that that we've recently seen, uh, which is which is um, uh, an interesting one. Uh, this one from North America, um, and uh, and it's, you know perhaps you guys have got some comments on this, but but the use case was an interesting one because it was um, uh, trying to uh, you know the the use case was creating a a reverse. Uh, planogram of the shelf. The customer couldn't get planograms from the retail store telling, you know, the, the, the retailer wouldn't hand out the planograms for the stores. And, um, and so the use case here was going into the store, taking images of the shelf, and then our, our, our technology doing a reverse of that photo into a planogram so that, that so that they could use that. I thought that was an interesting use case. I just want to throw it up because we didn't cover it um, as as we were as we were talking. Um, so um, uh, yeah, the in interesting thing. So another question came up in the uh, Q and A here, just in regards to herbs and spices. Is current technology not only reading products but also pixelating? 
tickets, labels, and comparing. Um, pixelating tickle, uh, oh, I, I'm not sure I understood that correctly. So let, let me try and answer answer this. So, um, so no, it's uh, the current use case that we're doing in this particular case, just, just talking about what we're doing there specifically in store. We are taking a, a photo, we are looking at the products, we are comparing the products that we saw against the authorized list of products for that store and basically doing a comparison there and saying, well, we didn't, you know, these, these authorized products we didn't see on the shelf, bang, bang, bang. So, so the result of that is we're telling the rep, here are three SKUs that are a problem. And then the rep is then responsible for sales checking and saying, okay, is this an out of stock? Meaning there is a tag, but there's just no product. Or uh, is actually this product a distribution void? There's actually no tag for this on the shelf either. Uh, or um, perhaps there's a there's there's a combination of these things. Perhaps it's in the wrong place or or somewhere else. But but the image recognition in that particular case is not reading the labels. There are other uh, there are other um, use cases where we are reading uh, prices. Um, in particular, promotion tags, uh, promo prices for competitors to try and work out what's on promotion and what the price is, the promo price, that kind of stuff. Stephen, does that answer your question? Give me a thumbs up if I if I hit that or if I missed that. Um, uh, and, and, you know, look, feel free to reach out to me. Um, great. Thank you. Yeah. Fe feel free to reach out to me uh, if you've got any more questions about that. But but yeah, in, the, in that case, we're not actually reading the labels. We're, we're, we're identifying the products. Any other yeah, questions from the field? Anybody else uh, coming in? Great. Okay. Well, look, we're we're uh, at, at, at running up on exactly uh, about five minutes short of the hour. Um, so uh, let me just uh, wrap this up. I want to say thank you very much to Archel and and Aaron for for joining and providing their expertise. Um, Aaron's been in the in the industry for over a decade. Archel's been with Stamfront for over twenty years. I've been with Stamfront for well over twenty years. I don't admit exactly how many years over 20 years. Um, Aaron's contact details are up on the screen there. Please feel free to reach out to him if you've got any questions. I want to say a uh, super uh, big thanks to uh, Georgia and the Drinks Association for hosting us today. Thank you very much. And thank you all uh, to, to those of you who are attended uh, today and those who might uh, watch the recording after, after the fact. Uh, I want to say thank you very much to you for spending spending some time with us. If you have any questions, please reach out. Um, we look forward to talking to you. So thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.